Hey guys, this is section 10.4, calculating the mean ionic activity coefficient using the debye huckel theory. Um, so we know for dilute electrolyte solutions, we observe that the mean activity coefficient um, approaches 1 as the molality approaches 0. So as it gets more and more dilute, it becomes more and more ideal. Um, we also know that the chemical potential of the solute in a dilute solution um, where it's an uh, electrolyte solution is lower than the chemical potential for a solution of non-electrolytes. Um, the reason for this is because the, um, of the net electrostatic action of the ions. Um, when you have a solute ion, you, know, you pick one of the ions, right, so, know, sodium ion or something. Um, the, um, the electrostatic interaction is attractive because the, um, what happens around that ion is the oppositely charged ions will preferably be closer to that ion um, and that lowers the, the energy, right? So, you know, if it's a sodium chloride solution, then there will be more chloride ions around a sodium ion than there are sodium ions around the sodium ion because, um, you know, basically it cools well. Um, and so this, um, these two guys, Debye and Huckel, came up with the um, Debye-Huckel theory. I missed an E here too. Um, that describes the lowering of the energy um, in the electrolyte solution. It's, it's a pretty cool theory. Um, we can do better now, but it, it was like it was a major step in our, our understanding, our approach to this. So, um, they, you know, so what, so what we're going to talk about in this section, by the way, is um, we're not going to derive the Debye Huckel theory. It's, it's way over beyond the scope of this class. I'm just going to present some of the results that we get from it. So this, the equations you're going to see are, for once, huh, not going to be derived. I'm just going to say, well, you know, it can be shown that and then show you the equation. Um, so we're going to start out by talking about the electrostatic potential, um, call it phi, um, for solute ions in a solution. Um, and that phi, the electrostatic potential, is going to depend upon the relative positions of the ions, right? Um, it ends up for a dilute solution of an electron, uh, electron electrolytes, um, where the ions have the charge plus or minus ZE, where Z is the number of protons in the nucleus and E is the charge on the nucleus. Um, we'll feel um, an energy increase or decrease from the potential um, that's, you know, you know, by this electrostatic interaction that's small compared to thermal energy. You know? um, so the way, the way we say that is the absolute value of the charge is a lot less than KBT, where this is Boltzmann's constant we saw way back in uh, chapter two, and this is the temperature in Kelvin. Um, and again, it can be shown that, or it, we know from electrostatics, that for an isolated ion in a dielectric medium, Okay, so that means just an ion in, in some medium where we're, it's, it's a uniform medium, just this generic medium that is dielectric, though. Um, the, the electrostatic potential f um, for that ion as a function of R is equal to plus or minus ZE over 4 pi epsilon naught epsilon R R. Um, ZE is the, you know, the charge. Um, 4 pi epsilon naught is a constant called the permittivity of free space. Um, epsilon r is basically the dielectric constant for that medium, and r is the distance from the center of the, the charge. In this model, guys, we treat the, char the, the ions as a point charge um, with zero um, volume. <clears throat> now, in a dilute electrolyte solution, um, you can do the same sort of calculation where the difference is we take into account the interaction between the ions. Now, we're still ignoring the solvent, you know, water or whatever it is. It's not in here. Um, but we're in this one, we're taking into account other ions. And we end up that, it ends up that the potential energy um, is, or the potential, the electrostatic potential for the solution is equal to the same term in front. So this term, guys, it's exactly the same as we got up here. Um, times this exponential factor, e to the minus kappa r. I'll, I'll show you kappa in just a minute. But the important thing at this point about this is that because this is, you know, as kappa and r increase, so kappa is always positive, r is always positive, um, this is always, this is going to be 1 over some number bigger than 1, which is going to mean that this 
electrostatic potential is always smaller than this, and it gets a smaller a lot faster exponentially than you know than this does. So it decreases really rapidly, you, know, you know, exponentially with R um, compared to the isolate ion. So <clears throat> there's the same equation. Now that kappa, um, it ends up that kappa squared. There's a name for it and all that is equal to this right here. It's not as much of a mess as it looks like. Again, this is the charge on a proton, or the opposite of the charge on an electron. Avogadro's number, this is converting from um, liter, you know, meters cubed to liters, that's all, because there's one decimeter is one, um, decimeter cubed is one uh, liter. Um, this is the molality, so the concentration, so we see that kappa gets bigger with the concentration. And these we saw before, this is the number of cations, this is the charge on the cation squared, number of anions, charge on the anion squared, permittivity of free space, dielectric constant, Boltzmann's constant, and the temperature. Um, oh, and this is the density of the solvent. Um, so, you know, so cap is basically the square root of this, this side right over here. Um, so what happens is, okay, so what this is saying, guys, is um, we're talking about something called screening. And that is how, how the... Um, the, the charge that's on that central ion is, um, you know, is its effect, it, it decreases with, with distance. And that's this exponential term right here. So because kappa is right here, as the, for one thing, as the molality or the concentration gets larger, um, one over, you know, well, this term gets smaller because it's e to the minus kappa r. So that, that's, that's one, you know, as the concentration increases, the, um, the, the electrostatic potential and that you know decreases. Um, also, as we have you know as we change the charges, as the charges get bigger, then the, um, the electrostatic potential de decreases faster. Also, um, <clears throat> and also the numbers right, of the ions. So what this is showing, guys, is this is showing the ratio of the electrostatic potential. Um, of the solution, the one with the exponential term, divided by the electrostatic potential of the isolated term, the, the first equation without the exponential term. And so when the radius is zero, this these are equal and it's one. Now the dashed line up here is the where the concentration is zero. So that's you know basically the isolated ion electrostatic potential. It's just straight. Um, so what we see from here is that first of all um, that the electric that because uh, this is the ratio and this is less than the isolate ion that the you know electrostatic potential in the solution decreases um, as we increase the the concentration right and as we also as we increase the the radius um, this one you know it's, it's pretty dramatic right here um, and this is this picture right here. It's just trying to show. It's from your textbook. It's not the best picture, but it's trying to depict what this screening is. So if this is the central, say, chloride ion, then it's showing that there are more sodium ions around it. And it didn't show it that clearly than there are um, chloride ions. Um, and so the the if we calculate the charge within this sphere, okay. That's that's basically the um, or the potential within the sphere. That's basically what we're calculating, and um, we see that for the the solution um, with these ions around the central ion, that's you know screened or you know um, as we go farther and farther out, decreases. So one over kappa is called the debye hückel screening length. As kappa gets big. Bigger, so that means the molality gets bigger, the charges get um, larger, like that. Um, then that means that the that, that sphere um, gets smaller and smaller. Where the so, in other words, the the screening happens faster, and the charge the the potential decreases faster um, as we go out from the nucleus. Um, it ends up that it's convenient to um, take all the concentration dependent terms and group them group them together. That's supposed to be a cap with right there into something called the ionic strength, capital I. And it looks like this, where we've, this is the molality of the cation, this is the charge on the cation squared, this is the molality of the anion, charge on the anion squared. And this is the sum. Um, using this definition, we can write kappa squared like this, where, we, oh, well, that this is kappa squared. We were in here, we're replacing this term basically with I, and then the two comes from, because, you know, this is really two times I, because of the one half right here. Um, 
and it just simplifies it further. And we're going to actually get this down pretty simple. It ends up that um, all this stuff out here okay, is our constants. So at 298 Kelvin, so T's 298, plug in, in the values for all this stuff, it ends up we can write cap as 2.91 times 10 to the 10th. And then all, all that's left in here is the, um, the ionic um, Yeah, the ionic strength, um, the dielectric constant, and the density of the solvent. Um, so, again, it can be shown that um, Debye and Huckel um, derived an expression. Okay, this was kind of the point of this whole section. Derived an expression um, from this um, for the mean activity coefficient. And what they did was they calculated the charge distribution of ions about a central ion, and the work needed to give these ions their full charge from an initially neutral state, so go from charge of zero to plus two or whatever. Um, it ends up that their result is called the debye huckel limiting law, and it looks like this. The natural log of the mean act, uh, ionic activity coefficient is equal to if the product, the absolute value of the product of the charges times e squared kappa i, you know, the ionic strength to the one half, eight pi epsilon naught epsilon r, Boltzmann's constant temperature. Okay, so a lot of constants in there. Um, and if so, stuff in here, um, you know, epsilon naught, kappa, they depend upon um, the, the solvent mostly and the ionic strength too. Um, so it ends up that, you know, for, if you know what the solution is, you can put all these numbers in. And for an aqueous solution at 298 Kelvin, it ends up that it simplifies to this natural log of the. Um, the mean activity, um, ionic activity coefficient is equal to negative 1.173 times the absolute value of the rate product of the charges, or if it's log base 10, it's this number right here. So these graphs right here show how, you know, good the debye huckel theory is, because they're graphing the natural log, the mean ionic activity coefficient, this term right here, versus the square root of i, this right here. So, you know, this is an equation of straight line, y, of straight line y equals mx, plus b, or b, the y-intercept zero, and um, all this stuff except for the square root of i is the, the slope, right? Um, so it's, you know, this number, this number if it's aqueous. And we see that for silver nitrate, um, it, it's pretty good up to um, the square root of the ionic strength about 0.1, right? which is down here. You know, it's linear, it follows this line. After that, it starts to deviate. Um, for more highly charged um, species, calcium chloride, it deviates around like 0 0.0, less than less than, less than 0 0.1, um, about 0 0.05, or a little bit past that. Um, so you know, it's a it's a good starting point, and it works for again dilute solutions. There are better, more complicated theories out there, um, but we're we're not going to talk about them in this class. So there you go.